there are a number of things you have to do before you uh, are able to start calculating your tipping force uh, with your yard art design. So I have this uh, world's worst uh, yard art design here, and we're going to use it as an example. Okay, the first thing you need to do, okay, it will help ease your life greatly, is go ahead and make certain that your animal is lined up properly. So here, the front view uh, of the animal is, you know, not necessarily the best front view. We could switch that around, but it is lined. It is not cocked at an angle. You can see here, when I go to the right side view, it is still, again, not at any weird angles. And then if we look at the top, again, it is. So it is normal um, to the planes that they're attached to. And all I did to do that is I went in and said, you know what, this body has basically all the mates to it. So I'll go to the body and I will open it up and I will open up its origin. And then I basically made its YZ plane, right? And the YZ plane of the assembly the uh, uh, made of those two together so i just hit constrain and then i said you know what yz is attached to yz and hit apply and then i went the other two and went from there you might have to flip things over um but get it lined up where it is not um you know at any weird angles so that's the first thing you need to do after you do that okay then you have um, this all aligned to where now we need to figure out where the center of gravity is and um, inventor will tell you that right so we can say right click here say i properties we can go to physical and then we have we have to hit update we can hit update but i don't have to we can see the center of gravity is at zero 0 0.35 so i have this slightly modeled wrong somewhere um, because really my and it may the, the if it's the X Y or Z it will probably differ depending on how you set this up, right? But in mine, you really should have two things that are zero because your center of gravity is probably in the middle if your object is symmetrical. And my X axis is zero, um, my Y axis is slightly off because my object is slightly not symmet symmetrical. Um, because I've just applied the same density to everything. So that's the only thing it can be. Um, I'm not going to go back and try to figure that out, what's going on. But then my z-axis, okay, you can see I'm minus 8.55 inches. So write those three down on a piece of paper and hit close. And then we're going to go to, we're in the symbol tab, we're going to go to UCS. So that is user coordinate system. And we're going to add our own coordinate system. So click that. And then it says specify origin of UCS and you can guess we're going to say the X is our center of gravity zero and hit the tab key we'll go to the next one minus 0.35 hit tab key again and minus 8.55 and hit enter and when you do that it's going to put a UCS a coordinate system right where your center of gravity is and just right click and say finish and that will place that and then now I have a point that I can measure to that indicates the center of gravity here's the thing if you change anything with your model right you change the size of you change placement if you do anything that will change the center of gravity you have to go and update this it will not automatically update so you have to go in right click and say redefine feature and type all those type your new center of gravity numbers in okay if you don't do this it will be wrong okay now the other thing we got to do is we got to figure out where are we tipping okay um, and so we're, we can tip forward, right? But we want to find the minimum force, and we can tip to the side. And if we look at this, then our tipping force is going to be lesser, uh, the least, of uh, tipping from side to side. So that's the way we're going to tip. So we need to say where is our point of tipping, okay? And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and draw and just put a point at the bottom of this um, where... Um, where you want it to tip. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click this and say open. I'm going to open this part back up and then I'm going to put on the bottom of this I'm going to put some points that I can use uh, that I can say hey this is where I'm going to be tipping from. So I'm going to click here I'm going to make a sketch 
and I'm just going to drop in some points. And to be honest with you, I'm going to put four in here because I don't know how my leg is rotated, and it's easier to put points are free. don't cost anything. All right. There are attached to this projected line. They're checked on the corner. I'm going to hit Finish Sketch, and I'll hit Save, and I will close this down. And then you'll see when I go in here, and I zoom in, you can see these aren't aligned to anything because when I put these in here, right, I didn't put a, a I didn't put a uh, constraint that says, hey, lock this down and keep it from rotating because honestly I didn't care. Now I care, right? So now all I got to do, same thing I, that I said when we were aligning this, we're just going to say constraint. We're going to go into the leg and we're going to pick, we're going to pick this leg. Let to figure out. Let's go out of constraint a second so we can figure out which leg that is. There's that leg. There's that leg. So we open it up, open up origin, and then we have the X, Y, Z planes. Just pick one, okay? And then, because we put all four on there, so it doesn't matter. Um, and so then we can go to the origin here and pick the plane we want that to match to. And let's get it to where we can see it. And we want not that plane. We want that plane. Okay, so nope, not that plane. Yeah, there's the plane we want. So we want the YZ plane and the, uh, we can do, we can, can we do the, yeah, we'll do YZ plane and YZ plane. That way it's easy to remember. So constrain YZ plane to YZ plane. All right. And then we're going to say we want it to be at an angle. We want that angle to be zero degrees. Okay, and that will make them parallel. And then we're going to say, you know what, I really want a directed angle because I'm telling you I want it zero degrees and hit apply. And then now I have a nice point right here to be my tipping point. So now all I have to do, okay, so I have my UCS and I have a point for uh, where I want it to be, to where I want it to tip. So now all I have to do, hit the M command, all right, that's measure. And I can say, you know what, I want to measure from this UCS to this point okay and then um, we can say yeah right here minimum distance if we go straight line it's 13.393 but we now have our x our y and our z distance okay and if you can see that our y x distance all right so we can look at the origin uh, we can look at the ucs here x is this distance the x distance here is 2.6 inches and if we go to the front all right, we can see that, that this is 2.6 inches from this point to this point. And that's the normal distance. This is X. So that is going to be your D in your equation. So the normal distance is 2.6 inches. And then you will find the weight, all right, by applying. Um, so that's D. And then we need to find weight. So if we look at our I properties, right, we have physical and we have our density correctly identified uh, through the material that we've applied and I've applied on oak and maple to all of, all of this okay and it takes that into account and it basically says hey the entire object the entire assembly weighs 30.47 pounds all right so we can take this 30.47 multiply it by our two point whatever it was that we just pulled off of our measure command and so that's the top of our equation and then all we need to do is divide by height and then we can say, you know what, the height of this is the distance from here to the bottom. We can measure that using the measure command. And then we have our entire formula. And then we can solve for uh, what does it need, uh, what, is, what is the tipping force required to tip that object. All right, so I hope this helps.